How many times you train with the rope, you hear about rescues from guys in the kitchen, and you start to wonder, is my chance ever going to come? You carry the rope to the roof hundreds of times, you never even use it. Well, tonight was going to be the chance that I was going to get to use the rope. Bobby and myself went to the floor above the fire, and Bobby spotted a victim who was getting ready to jump. As we deployed the rope, he tied himself up, and I put the life belt on. I started worrying about whether I'd be able to hold Bobby from falling. Things that run through your mind are worries like, is your victim going to jump? Is she going to be there? Will she run away from the window? A lot of pressure, very little time to deal with. These dramatic rescues were made by individuals using initiative, bravery, knowing their equipment, and how to use it. The first two come from within. The third, we can help you with. Hello, I'm Lieutenant Bainton, and today we're going to discuss the personal harness and its many uses. The personal harness and rope were designed to allow the firefighter a quick, safe means of escape when there aren't any alternatives. The performance of the harness is dependent upon its proper fit to the individual. Each harness is assigned to the individual firefighter and shall be worn at all times when on duty. You will be shown how to achieve a proper fit how to use the harness with a personal rope, the life-saving rope, and how the harness is used as a life belt. Let's stop in on Lieutenant Broshan. He and other members of the rope unit will help me demonstrate this equipment. Hi, Andy. Come on in. Bob, how about giving me a hand explaining the personal harness and rope? Sure, Andy. First, let's go over the nomenclature of the harness. The yellow material is called the waistband. Beginning on the far left of the waistband, we have the D-ring. Continuing to the right, we come to the first of two slide buckles. Moving along the yellow material, we come to the black hook support strap. Then the second slide buckle, and then finally on the far right, the snap hook, which connects to the D-ring. The blue straps are the leg straps with adjustable buckles. The rappel hook is attached to the handle of the material. The rappel hook has a gate with a locking screw collar. The gate of the repel hook opens on an angle. This enables the repel hook to fit over the railing of a towel ladder bucket, the rungs of an aerial ladder, and even a scaling ladder, enabling the harness to be used as a safety belt. The personal harness and rope have serial numbers for ID purposes. If you are transferred or promoted, the equipment goes with you. Well, Bob. Now that we know the parts of the harness, let's try and get a good fit. First, with your left hand, grab the D-ring palm down. And with your right hand, grab the waistband near where the black hook support strap is sewn. Align the D-ring with the outside seam of your left pant leg, like so. Pull the waistband snugly across the upper portion of your hip bones and line up the black hook support strap with the outside seam of your right pant leg. Andy, if the black strap does not reach the seam or goes past it, an adjustment will be necessary. If it reaches the seam, do nothing. Thanks. That's good to know. OK. To make the adjustment, lay the harness back down on the table like so with a D-ring to your left. Then, working with the slide buckle closest to the D-ring, move the upper portion of the webbing through the slide buckle to the left to tighten or to the right to loosen. If you need more adjusting space, move both pieces of webbing through the slide buckle like so. The purpose of this adjustment is to center the rappel hook on your body. It's important to note, once this adjustment is made, it should not be touched again. OK, let's try and fit this harness to my waist. First, make sure that both leg straps are loosened fully. Then grab the D-ring palm down in your left hand and grab the snap hook palm down in your right hand. Hold the harness out in front of you like so, with the two ends, the D-ring and the snap hook, about 18 inches apart. You'll get a picture something like this. 
with your right leg and your right leg only, step over and through two blue leg straps and pull the harness up around the upper portion of your hip bones and fasten the harness on your left side. A proper fit requires a slight degree of effort to connect the snap hook and the D-ring. Remember, it, the harness should fit snugly in this area. If the D-ring and snap hook don't meet, or the harness is loose, an adjustment will be necessary. To make an adjustment, take the harness off and lay it back down on the table, making sure the D-ring is to the left. This time to adjust the harness, we'll work with the slide buckle located between the snap hook and the black hook support strap. To adjust the harness, move the upper portion of the webbing through the slide buckle to the right to loosen, to the left to tighten. Again, if you need more adjusting space, move both pieces of webbing through the slide buckle like so. Remember, Andy, a proper fit requires a slight effort to fasten the D-ring to the snap hook. The waistband should not slide off your hips when the leg loops are made snug. Excess yellow material behind you may be folded over and taped down. In the future, should the harness not fit you properly and an adjustment may be necessary, be sure to use the proper slide buckle. When the harness is not being used, the rappel hook may be placed out of the way with the black hook support strap. Okay, Bob, that takes care of the harness. Let's talk about the personal rope. The personal rope is a 40-foot nylon rope. It has a snap hook on one end and an aluminum stop plate on the other. The intended use of the personal rope is to enable firefighters to remove themselves from an untenable position to a position of safety. It's to be used as a last resort and never to be used to make rescue pickups. If the rope is used once in the field, it should be placed out of service. Also, the rope should be inspected and repacked monthly. Andy, let's go over rewinding the rope. Okay. Well, to rewind your personal rope, you're going to need the winding device. The winding device consists of three pieces. A flat piece with a U-shaped cutout, a fixed large dowel, and a removable small dowel. To start, make sure that both dowels are even, with the small dowel on top, the large dowel on the bottom, and the U-shaped cutout facing you. Bob, can you play out that rope, please? Take the eye of the snap hook and place it over the small dowel like so. It's important to keep the ends of the dowel pointed slightly upward so that none of the turns come off the dowels. Make sure the dowels are even. Place the rope through the cutout and drape the rope over the small dowel. Grabbing the winding device with your left hand and applying a slight pressure on the dowels to keep the uh, dowels at the far end apart. Drape the rope over the small dowel away from your body and about a half inch from the end of the large dowel. Now start to make your windings away from your body. Keep winding the rope towards the flat piece of wood. Start the second row of windings back towards the end of the dowels. It's important not to put pressure on the second row. This could cause previous rows to fall off the ends of the dowels. Also, if any windings fall off the dowels, the rope must be removed and rewound again. Why is that? You run the risk of the rope getting tangled when deployed. I wouldn't want that to happen, so let's continue the second row of windings, leaving approximately one or two turns from the first row of windings exposed, and continue winding in this fashion until the rope is just about rewound. Before you get to the end of the winding, allow the stop plate to spin out. This releases all the kinetic energy stored in the rope. If you don't, the rope could tangle when deployed. Place the stop plate on the coil of rope on one of the wide sides and make sure the tail is on top of the plate. Okay, Andy, now we're ready to put the rope into the pouch. Keep the dowels pointed up so the turns don't fall off 
and place the pouch over the rope and pull down. Now stand the bag on the table with the dowels pointing up and remove the small dowel. Now remove the hook from the cutout and re remove the remainder of the winding device. You can pack the rope in the bag and place the hook through the cutout in the inner flap. Fasten the two fasteners. These snaps here? That's right. What happens if you only do one, Bob? It's important that both fasteners be fastened or the rope will not deploy properly. Hmm. Now, Andy, stuff the rest of the rope back through the inner flap and lay the hook on top. Close the outer flap and fasten the Velcro fasteners. Okay. It's much easier to work with a partner, but you can pack the rope by yourself. Well, now that we have the personal rope packed and we've been fitted for the harness, let's go over how the harness can be used. Okay, Andy, let's take a walk to the training tower and demonstrate the use of the harness with the personal rope and the life-saving rope. Great. The purpose of the single slide is to get yourself from an untenable position to a position of safety. Bob, I'll do the single slide. You talk me through it. Sounds good, Andy. Let's do it. First, determine where you're going to slide to. OK, Lieutenant Satilli's down in the net, and he's going to be my uh, safety man. OK, Andy. Open the bottom two snaps of your turnout coat for easier access to the leg straps and the rappel hook. Reach back and snug up the leg straps. Then release your rappel hook. Now take the pouch and open the outer flap. Remove the hook end from the pouch. Hold the hook firmly in one hand. It's a good idea to hold this hand behind your back. Good idea, Bob. Then drop the pouch from the window. Find a substantial object. I'm going to use that standpipe riser over there. That's good, Andy. Take a turn around it and snap the hook back onto the rope. Notice that no knots are used. By dropping the rope first, then taking a turn around the substantial object, the rope can now guide you to your point of descent. You're now ready to attach the rappel hook to the rope. Keep the rope on your left side and face the direction of descent. Grab the rope in your left hand and give it a tug to remove any slack from the rope. Slide your hand past the edge of the window to approximately mid forearm. Hold the rope firmly at this mark and turn your body to the left. Your back should now point toward the descent. With your right hand, reach down and grab the rappel hook. Then lay the solid side of the hook on top of the rope at your left hand. Now hold the rope and hook with your right hand. Use your left hand to open the screw collar and push in the gate. Your right hand holds the gate open while covering the gate end. Then take four turns under and over the hook. Once this is done, release the gate and make up the screw collar fully until it can rotate no further. Slide your right hand off onto the rope about six inches from the hook. Okay. Turn to your right and face the point of descent. Then straddle, in this case, the window. Place your left hand over the rope on the inner edge of the windowsill. Make sure your hand doesn't get caught under the rope. All right, it's clear. The harness hook must clear the outer edge of the windowsill. Let me just adjust the hook. OK, Andy. It's clear. Shift your buttocks out of the window until your left knee is against the inner edge. Slide your right hand along the rope, extending it down a full arm's distance. With okay. your right arm rigid, press the rope between your fist and the wall, down and away from the window. OK, Bob. Swing your body out of the window into a vertical position. Once in this position, Move the right hand along the rope to your right buttock. Maintain the position of the right hand at the right buttock 
Sliding is controlled by allowing the rope to pass through the gloved right hand. Your speed is controlled by your grip on the rope. Bring the left hand to the gate side of the hook. Remember, your hand can come off the hook to clear obstructions. Your feet should be against the wall at least 12 inches apart, toes up. Make sure you look down to avoid obstructions. Let's go up to the roof and uh, do the same with the life-saving rope. All right, I'll come up with you and we'll let Bob be the safety man. OK, fine. Mike, I just want to emphasize to the members that the single slide is not to be used to make rescue pickups. As before, I'll check to see where I want to go. All right, Andy. OK, it's clear. I'll take you through the operation. All right, fine, Mike, thanks. First, as before, open the bottom two snaps of your turnout coat to adjust your leg straps and release your rappel hook. Place the backpack carrying case near your substantial object. Remove the snap hook from the pocket of the case. Grab the anti-chafing device. Pull it and the bowling on a bite through the window. Allow the anti-chafing device to slide back toward the carrying case and pull enough rope through to tie a clove hitch and binder on the taut part of the rope. Take the anti-shaving device and the carrying case and walk toward your point of descent. Check that there are no obstructions to your line of descent and deploy the rope by tossing the carrying case to the street. You're now ready to attach the rappel hook to the rope. Keep the rope on your left side and face the direction of descent. Grab the rope in your left hand and give it a tug to remove any slack from the rope. Slide your hand past the edge of the parapet to your elbow. Hold the rope firmly at this mark and turn your body to your left. Your back should now be towards the point of descent. With your right hand, reach down and grab the rappel hook. Then lay the solid side of the hook on the top of the rope at your left hand. Now hold the rope and hook with your right hand. Use your left hand to open the screw collar and push in the gate. Your right hand holds the gate open while covering the gate end. Then take four turns under and over the hook. One, two, three, and four. Once this is done, release the gate and make up the screw collar fully until it can't rotate any further. Slide your right hand off onto the rope about six inches from the hook. Grasp the rope firmly. This is your lifeline. OK, Mike. Pick up the anti-chafing device with your left hand, turn to your right, and straddle the parapet. Position the anti-chafing device, making sure the rappel hook is clear of the parapet. All right, the hook is clear. Place your left hand over the anti-chafing device and grasp the inner edge of the parapet. The heel of your left hand will hold the anti-chafing device in place. Slide your buttocks to the outer edge of the parapet. Move your right hand down along the rope until your arm is fully extended and your left knee is at the inner edge of the parapet. OK, Mike. With your right arm rigid and the rope between your hand and the wall, make sure your clothing and handy talkie are clear of the hook. Swing your body off the parapet using your rigid right arm for leverage. 
Once you're in the vertical position, move your right hand to the right buttock. Bring your left hand from the parapet to the gate. Maintain the position of the right hand at the right buttock. Sliding is controlled by allowing the rope to pass through your glove right hand. Your rate of descent is controlled by your grip on the rope. Bob can assist in controlling your slide by putting tension on the rope if necessary. Oh, okay. Thanks for being a safety man, Bob. Okay, Andy. The final operation that we have to demonstrate is the rescue pickup. That can only be performed with the life-saving rope. Let's go up and give it a try, Andy. Sounds good, Bob. When the member to be lowered is wearing the personal harness, the bowline and the bite is not needed. It must be untied at the start of the operation. However, until otherwise directed, the rope will be carried on the apparatus with the bowline and the bike tied onto it. Now, you'll need help at your location. It takes at least two members to perform this operation. A third member can act as a guide man. Bob, why don't you lower me and Mike, you could be my guide man. Sure, Andy. A few points about the guide man. He relays messages between the member being lowered and the member doing the lowering. Face the rescue and cup your hand like this when relaying the messages. Why do that? It enables the member doing the lowering to hear you while the guide man doesn't lose sight of the rescue. That's good to know. Also, one of the first things you must do before performing this operation is to contact your officer or the officer in charge of the operation. Let them know the victim's location and what your intentions are. Also, make verbal contact with the victim. Reassure them that help is on the way and maintain that contact while being lowered. Another thing to remember is try and pick a point of descent which will place you alongside of the window. Mike, why don't you talk us through the operation? Okay. Again, members involved in the rescue will open the bottom two snaps of their turnout coat to adjust the leg straps and release their rappel hook. Once a substantial object has been picked, the lowering man will place the carrying case with its back toward the roof's edge, midway between the substantial object and the edge of the roof. He will then open the case, hand the bowling on a bite and anti-chafing device to the member being lowered. The member being lowered must untie the bowling on the bite. We'll refer to this member as the rescuer. The lowering man will then invert the carrying case and lift it clear of the rope, then place the case out of the way. He will then grab the snap hook on top of the coil and place it in the roof adjacent to the coil of the rope. The rescuer will step on his snap hook to hold it in position while the lowering man pays out the rope from the top of the coil to the substantial object. The lowering man will pull this rope taut, take a turn around the substantial object and tie a clove hitch and binder on the taut part of the rope. He will then pick up the snap hook from under the rescuer's foot. Snap it downward on the repel hook behind the pin. The screw collar should face left. The rescuer pulls the repel hook from beneath his turnout coat and attaches the snap hook of the rope to the middle of the harness handle. Hold the anti-chafing device in his left hand. The lowering man will walk forward to remove all slack from the safety line. Face the rescuer and grab hold of the rope leading from the anti-chafing device with your right hand. And bring this hand back along the rope to your right hip. Using this point on the rope as your mark, bring the rope forward and lay the repel hook on top of the rope at that mark. While holding the rope and hook in your right hand, use your left hand to open the gate in the prescribed manner. With your left hand, make four turns under and over the repel hook. Two, three, four. 
Let the gate snap back and tighten the screw collar snugly. Then hold the gate of the repel hook in your left hand. Slide your right hand along the rope to your right buttock and feed enough rope to permit the rescuer to reach the parapet. The rescuer will turn to the right and approach the parapet, then straddle it with his right leg on the outside. Allow enough slack so that the anti-shaping device lays flat with about five inches of the device over the outer edge. At this point, the rescuer will grip the inner edge of the parapet with one hand on either side of the anti-shaping device. Placing his right thumb on top of the anti-shaping device will serve to hold it in position. Slide your buttocks to the outer edge of the par parapet until the left knee is at the inner edge. The rescuer should inform the lowering man that he is now ready to be lowered. Bob, I'm ready to be lowered. Hey, Andy, dismount. When the command to dismount is received, dismount the parapet into a vertical position with your hands remaining on the parapet until you are vertical. Position your feet approximately 12 inches apart with your toes up. Then give the command down. When doing a rescue pickup, here are important points to remember. The lowering man will control the descent with his gloved right hand at his buttocks position. The rescuer should make a preliminary stop somewhere slightly higher than the victim's level. This stop should be a signal to the lowering man that you are close to the victim. When you call to be lowered again, he will lower you more slowly so that you don't pass the victim. When you are lined up with the victim, approximately at the shoulder to shoulder level, give the command to stop. The lowering man will halt your descent by tightening his grip on the rope. The rescuer will swing over to the victim. Don't use the victim to pull yourself over to the window. Have the victim place their arms around your neck and their legs around your waist. The rescuer should wrap his own arms around the victim's upper torso, under the victim's armpits. Lock your hands behind the victim's back. Come out of the window. Swing back to your line of descent, maintaining your firm hold. Then call to be lowered to your selected point of safety. You all set? Yeah. Go ahead. Down. 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 Down, stop. Oh, he's around that Down area, slow. Down slow, Bobby. Down. 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 Down slow. Down. He's approaching the victim. Down. Down. Got another foot or two. Down. He's up. Down a little bit Down. more. Down. 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 Stop. Stop. OK, he's right on the victim. He's going to okay. pick him up, Bobby. Got Hold your arms position. around my neck. Your legs around my waist. Victim's getting around his shoulders. Mm -hmm. OK. He's got him. Here we go. OK, they're coming off. Hold that position. OK, down. Down, 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 down. Right on the money, into the street. Great, good rescue. Inspect and maintain your equipment. Your life depends on it. If you notice any defects, notify your company officer immediately. In closing, a rescue pickup should only be made by lowering a member, never a single slide. Rope rescues should be a last resort.